Have you seen this? This is the Eno phone. It's a new set of headphones that have EEG contacts that read your mind. It tracks your level of focus and concentration while also feeding you neurofeedback to try to keep you in a state of deep focus. And these contacts are continuously measuring your brain waves. Look at that, live brain data. This is your brain. Pretty cool. And you can see how small it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jacob. I've got my Eno phone here. Tell me, what is the Eno phone about? Who is it meant for? Yeah, so we really see the Eno phone as, as a Fitbit for your brain. Like if you imagine on the physical fitness side, if you really want to get into fitness, learn about your body, take your nutrition seriously, start exercising, you could buy a Fitbit and it gives you all the data, the motivation, the guidance that you need to really take that seriously. And we want to just do the exact same thing, but for cognitive and mental health instead of for physical health. What are the four different uh, sensors really telling you about your brain's activity? So the, the sensors themselves, so you've got two in the upper band here that kind of retract into the band and sit on the top of your head, and then two in the ear cups. Uh, and collectively, they're measuring the electrical activity from the frontal parietal lobe, the upper cortex of that area. And that is a region of your brain that's really responsible for a lot of uh, stimuli attenuation and, and visual attention. It's, it's an oversimplification, but it's feeding the executive function part of your brain, which is in the front. They retract. So it's not like when you put this on your head uh, that it's going to be digging into your skull. It's actually quite comfortable. We spent a lot of time really working on that because if you go into a medical lab right now and you get a clinical EEG, which is where our technology is based, that's the big problem is it takes almost an hour to set up. They're squishing electrodes to your head with conductive paste. And often they have to use like an abrasive to try and get a really good quality contact. It's not comfortable. So cool what your product does by showing you, you know, while you're in Safari or while you're doing your email or while you're doing Excel spreadsheets or whatever, what your concentration levels are at various times. What is a good number first? And what does it uh, what does it mean that it varies so much? Everyone's brain is really very different, and so this is a constant competition between me and my co-founder. I get in the range of the uh, 80s and 90s usually in a given focus session, and he gets in the ranges of the 70s to 80s. And we, we've really established that doesn't necessarily mean that one of us has better concentration than the other. It's it's that our brains set a different baseline. And so what's more interesting is to be able to say, okay, well, if my trend typically looks like this, and then you have one session that's dramatically lower, that's representative, that means something. And you could start to look into that data and see, okay, well, why might that have been? I've noticed myself um, that multitasking completely tanks my focus. And so that's, that's a, a, a data point that I saw very concretely. As we add more features, you'll be able to label times when you had caffeine, times when you slept well or slept poorly, uh, what task you were doing, what activities, and what categories of work. And the more data we get, the more we'll start to be able to bring those insights to light. Are you using the built-in mic at the yeah, moment? I'm speaking to you through it uh, at the moment. Wow, it's great quality. Aside from just having good brain tech, we knew we had to have a really good Bluetooth noise canceling voice mic headphone. And so we partnered up with Onkyo really early on in order to really accentuate that audio quality and make sure that when you get this device, it lives up to the headphone expectations as well as having all this cool new brain tech. You also provide this sort of like the soundtrack. Yeah, exactly. We, we call that our, our neuroadaptive music. It's the idea that what if your musical playlist and your, your ambient soundtracks understood the effect that they were having on your brain. And we're, we're powered by an AI that, that's looking to tweak that music in order to have the best environment for focus. And so we've, we've made a modular soundtrack where we can control the, the intensity of it, the brightness of it, the complexity of it, the warmth. And, and we're able to tune those parameters in real time as you're listening based on the feedback that we get from our sensors of how it's affecting your motivation and your fatigue and your cognitive workload. Can you also be listening to your own music and things like that and still recording the EEG data? Yeah, so technically uh, my app is recording my data right now. So we'll be able to show you what that looks like after the call. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of universities would love to be looking at this as being a great study tool. Yeah, we've had several research universities reach out to us and, and say, look, like, we want to to run an experiment at a scale of you know hundreds and maybe thousands of people that's not feasible with a clinical EEG the, the device itself costs you know 20 grand to buy and you can't have a hundred of them in a lab for, for any reasonable price and so the fact that you could get 
you know, hundred or thousand of these and distribute to them for, for a very accessible research price, it, it changes the way that they start to think about their research rather than having research that can be very hyper controlled where you get 15 perfect minutes of data from 12 people. You might be able to start to run experiments where you have much messier data, real world data from a thousand people and start to find the correlations that way. Plaudits again for the work that you're doing. Very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to explore and benefit from, from your your work. So thank you so much for bringing it to the world. Yeah, thank you. I uh, I, I remember the feeling of, of back in 2016, flying into uh, Shenzhen for the first time to, to participate in Hacks and uh, j just trying to conceive of what it would look like to, to bring Enophone to, to life. And so uh, thank you very much for, for all the help that Hacks and that SOSV has provided. It's been, uh, it's been a huge benefit. We're big believers in what you're bringing to the world. Thanks so much. And this is Sean O'Sullivan reporting from the frontier of tech. You want to try it? Go ahead.